Over to you, ladies. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, Thanks for calling us young ladies. I appreciate that so <laughs> yes. much. We, we always got to think of that way. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I feel old. I feel old right today. Now. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Liz. This is my sister, Sam. We blog over at prettylifegirls.com. You can find us on all social platforms at Pretty Life Girls. It's so fun seeing where you're all from. We are here in Harriman, Utah. It's a little bit outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. And we're so excited to be here with you. We are tie-dye obsessed. I know the summer is coming to, the, to an end, but we're here to say it can go into the winter. We should do it year round. <laughs> it shouldn't be seasonal. So we're really excited to show you how to make this pajama set. It's so cute and cozy. The kit we're gonna use from Tulip is one of our favorites. Before we get started, we want to tell you a little bit about our tie-dye book that's out now. So if you wanted to do more tie-dye projects, if you want to learn about different methods of binding, what dyes you should use, all different kinds of things, this has 20 projects as well as everything you need to know to get started with tie-dye. You can find it on Amazon. It's called the DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style. So you can search it on Amazon and find it. We'd love it if you check it out. We use a ton of Michaels and Tulip Color Crafts um, dyes in this book. So you can go to Michaels and get everything that you need to make something from this. And what are you seeing? I just was looking, someone's asking where we got the PJ set. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's turn it over to Samantha. Okay, let's get started. Well, I just wanted to say too, you know, like we live in Utah, so winter comes hard. Yeah. And if you're in a place like that, there's seasonal, depression yeah oh for sure and I think tie dye could really lift yeah, your spirit yeah. during that time that's true color yes okay so to answer your question Robin we got this set on um it's called lever it but you can get it on Amazon too and they're just 100% cotton white set it can be really hard and yeah these are more of a pajama than a lounge set just because it can be really tricky to find a 100% cotton mm -hmm. lounge set. You maybe would need to buy separates like a 100% cotton sweatshirt and 100% cotton sweatpants that are the same brand so that you can feel confident about the way it takes color. You could also go as low as like a 70% cotton maybe mix, 60, 60 and, and still get really good results. So you can look for things that aren't 100% cotton, but 100% cotton is the most foolproof when it comes to tie dye. So you don't have to stick with that. If you stay around 60 or 70% cotton or some other natural fiber, you're safe. But um, we use 100% cotton just because you can trust it. Yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna hold this up so you can see it's L, this might be, this is probably flipped. L-E-V-E-R-E-T is where we got ours. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the questions. As we go along, make sure you ask, any questions you have about tie-dye in general, and obviously this project, just put them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer New York City. Oh, my oh goodness. so wow. fun. Okay, so are we ready? We're ready. Are you guys ready? Let's Can do you it. hear us? And yeah, see? let us know if you have any Everything troubles. Okay, thumbs up, anybody? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. I love that feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay, so what we are going to be using is our pajama set that we said, again, white 100% cotton will give you the best results. Um, since this is a pastel project, like Liz was saying, a little bit of polyester won't interfere too much. Mm -hmm. it, it will be light. Yeah. And that's good. So um, and then we're using, this is Tulip's pastel tie-dye kit. So it comes with these five delicious darling colors. colors. I mean, like, makes you want ice this cream. This pink is our favorite pink because it's like such a good blush. You sorry, we're blind. Stuff. The way we both have to lean forward. I'm no. sorry. Do you have to always start with white fabric? No. Um, we have some projects on our blog that were on gray. Mm -hmm. And that's fun because it gives you a little bit more muted. I would say um, any pastel shade, you could do it. Yes. I wouldn't go too dark, but you could do pastel colors. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. So if you really want a high contrast, then go with white. If you're okay with a little more muted, then mm -hmm. Good question. something with a little color is fine. Okay, so we have our tie-dye kit. This has 
rubber bands. It has a refill for each of these bottles. So you can get two uses out of each bottle, has gloves, everything you need. And we're gonna bust that open in a second. Then we are also using this two minute tie dye kit, which is a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are very impatient tie dyers. Mm -hmm. So traditionally with tie dye, you would put your project in a plastic bag or wrapped in saran wrap and you would let it sit for eight to 24 Which hours. Which is obscene amount of time to wait. It's pure torture. <laughs> and so- Unacceptable. Unacceptable. <laughs> Tulip has come up with these containers. This is what they look like. They look kind of like a plastic Tupperware. Yeah. yeah. And you put them in these, put it in the microwave for a couple minutes and it sets the fabric. So it like sets the dye. A so, must have. <laughs> must and you can reuse the containers so mm -hmm. you can just use them over and over yeah. so it's a good very, it's very worth cool. the invest yes. if there's if there is such a thing as tie-dye tech this is it <laughs> and it's wonderful yes okay once you add water to dye powder how long is it good to use i know it depends on the on the dye that you're using jackie i don't know do you have an answer to that for tulip specifically I, my only question, I, I don't know, like, I guess if, just from our personal experience, we've let dye sit in bottles for days and then reuse them. Yeah. I, but I don't know if that's best practice. Yeah. We don't know if that's <laughs> best practice. That is just our user experience. So I, with Tulip specifically, it lasts and lasts and lasts, whether or not it's supposed to. <laughs> 72 hours. Okay. Robin says 72 hours Great. to use dye. Again, Jackie, if there's a best practice on your end, yeah, that would be great to know. Okay, cool. Um, the thing about Tulip that we love is the one-step mm -hmm. component. So what that means is with other dyes, you need a fixative to get the dye to bond to the fabric. Mm -hmm. With lots of dyes, that is soda ash, and you would soak it or mix it. Tulip tie-dye has the soda ash mixed in. So all you have to do is fill it with water. My hands are already dirty. <laughs> how? <laughs> this, we this is how it is. We have yes. dyed hands. It's okay, like, let's get started. Yeah, get those gloves Okay, so gloves are in our container. Oh, oh let's flip. move overhead. Okay. Felicia, oh shoot, my hands are dirty and I don't want to get it. I think we're good later why don't you go wash them got it it's okay i'm just gonna throw these on okay okay, okay. you guys are see perfect okay. okay so i'm gonna put these gloves on here i'll show you a closer look at our book while we're waiting for her to put gloves on you guys want to see some things in it is it beautiful those are tulip bottles right there we tell you all the different fabric and setting techniques here's our binding techniques it's best to use dye within 24 hours after mixing. Great. Dye left unapplied after 24 hours will begin to lose concentration and will result in noticeably weaker color intensity. Okay. okay. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. This, I like, I'll say it. Here's the title, DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style. You can just find that on Amazon and I'm going to put it over here. Okay. This is our finished one. So as a reminder, this is what we are making and we can move it. Here's our plain set that got some dry dye speckles on it, but luckily that's one of the colors we're using. So we're going to use this lavender color from the kit and this blue color from the kit. Liz, will you fill those mm -hmm. up? And I'm going to start binding. I did want to show you in here. These are the refills for each thing. You would just em empty these back in the bottle and fill it up with water. Move this out of the way. Okay, so to start, we're gonna bind our shirt and you can do yours however you want. So if you want a spiral, you can do that. If you want to do um, just like a bunch, you can do that. We are doing like an irregular, um, diagonal stripe. Oh, someone says, I found these 100% cotton long johns on sale for $15 in lots of sizes. Okay, if you're looking for something. And long speaking johns, of tie-dye in, not in summer, how cute would it be to do like, you know, Christmas pajamas are a thing, to do tie-dye Christmas pajamas. 
Anyway, okay, the shirt is damp. Thank you for asking that because I forgot to mention it. Okay, I'm gonna scoot. okay. So I have my shirt laid out and what I want are stripes this way. I want some to be skinny and some to be fat. And so I am going to just bind it. I'm gonna kind of accordion fold it the way that I wanna bind it. So I'm gonna keep mine pretty irregular, just making sure that the top of the shirt is exposed plenty. Liz, will you bind the pants while I yep. do the top? Okay, so I'm just kind of like, just scrunching it like this. If you want to do a more precise accordion fold, you could. Should our shirts also be damp? So you can dye dry or you can dye wet. We, in this case, are doing wet because we like the dye to spread a little bit more organically. Liz, we're doing a diagonal on these. Bro. Just bunching it. I mean, if you want it bunched. Um, okay. So this is my fold. Oh, I was talking about the wet or dry. So if you, if your shirt is damp, it will take the dye in a more organic way and it will also spread better and absorb the dye better. So what we have found with dry, dyeing things dry is sometimes the dye will kind of sit on top of the fabric and not go in to it, not be absorbed. So for a project like this, I would do it damp, but you can try it dry. It's kind of fun. You get like sharper edges mm -hmm. when it's dry. And when you do it wet, you get more like watercolory because it spreads. Yes. Okay, where did my rubber, oh, here are my rubber bands. Okay, so I bunched it this way and now I'm gonna rubber band it down. Here it is. And like I said, I want some skinny lines and some more fat. So I'm just gonna do a variety of some rubber bands closer together and some farther apart. And you can just go random. This is one of our favorite, favorite things about tie dye is it's really hard to mess it up. And, oh, do you need to pre-wash the fabric? That is recommended always because sometimes fabrics have like a coating of some kind or sizing on it that will prevent the dye from being absorbed as well. So pre-washing is always a good idea. Okay, I wanna do a skinny one here. What tie-dye projects have you guys made this summer? What, what was your best project that turned out? Or is this your first time taking the plunge? <laughs> also, it's really stressful binding on, on camera. camera yeah it feels <laughs> stressful and will you like stop judging our binding <laughs> lydia felicia oh not for sure. danielle <laughs> stop stop judging I've our never binding. done this okay <laughs> well let us know if we're going too fast we live like we live tie-dye so we're <laughs> drowning in it constantly <laughs> And so if we are overlooking things, please let us know. In our book, um, there are pages that show how to do different binding techniques. We also have a video on our YouTube channel that has six different binding techniques. So if this is your first time or you haven't done it for a while, that would be a good refresher. Did a couple of dye projects last summer. What did you do, Jen? Yes, let's hear about T-shirts with grandkids. That is That's always so, so fun. fun. Yep. What a good First grandma. timer. Great. Love that. that. Okay. Well, you tell us if we need to slow down. Yes. Or if we're not covering. You can see that we've got some 
dye that has just some residual that was on the outside of the bottle. It happens. It happens. You can be more thorough about rinsing your bottles before you use them. But I actually really like when they're random textures and stuff in yes. my dye projects. Yes, if you're type A, this is actually good practice to help you <laughs> let go. Let go a little bit. It's sort of like therapy. Yeah, the more you accept the unexpected in tie-dye, the better your results will be. Yes. And it's so fun because you never know how it's going to turn out and the reveal is we're still so even after all the tie-dye projects we've done a million it feels like at this point we're still surprised all Every the time, time. <laughs> i did mickey mouse t-shirts for a disney world trip oh. with family. did you do like like did you bind a mickey head or did you like tie-dye a shirt and then put mickey mouse on top yeah, of I it yeah i want to hear about that me too i need more details <laughs> barbara <laughs> oh <laughs> also if you are watching this do you have plans to tie-dye a lounge set? And yes, pajamas? what colors would you use? Are you, are you just gonna looking do the for some blue? inspiration? All right, my pants are done. I was fast. Okay, I'm on my last Did rubber I do band. Okay. Yep. Okay, and we've got our dye. I bound the Mickey head and then tie-dyed the shirts and used a bleach pen to make the head stand out more. So, that is very cool. So did you do the thing where you fold the shirt in half and you like, kind of like when you do a heart, how you draw like half of it and gather it along that line? I, I just need to know all about <laughs> that this. That is really cool. Oh, Audrey did a Mickey shirt too. Wow, cool. you guys, that is really cool. Okay. Keep talking about Mickey. Yes, I gathered, gathered it. Oh, Barbara, yeah, cool. you're a professional. Okay, so now we're gonna bring in our handy set tie-dye container here. So we've just got a big giant plastic Tupperware. We've got a few cookie racks here that we like to use so that our projects don't sit in the dye. So this is where we're going to apply our dye. I'm going to put the top here. This is always a good time to talk about color choice also. So we elevate it above the die so that it doesn't sit in it and pool. And that's why we kind of like to have it above it so it's not sitting in it. And then as you're choosing your colors, if you, if you have questions about what's going to look good, our rule of thumb is to either stick with all warm colors or all cool colors because they'll blend well or to do uh, primary colors because they'll blend really well. Otherwise you'll get some muddling and some browns and that sort of thing. Um, if you wanna do like red and green for Christmas, a method where like they're separated kind of like this stripes method would work great because they wouldn't blend as much. But when you're choosing your colors, it's always a good idea to, to think about the color wheel so that you don't get a bunch of muddling. Yes, okay. So before we start dyeing, um, okay, so we've got this filled up and we've got our blue so i am we're gonna share just a couple tips i got some paper towels here too we like to test out our colors before we put them on because even though this is a pastel kit you can see this blue is still really pigmented pretty bold so what i'm gonna do is squirt a little on this paper towel to see if it's the color that I want. So I'm gonna do that just over here a little. Mm -hmm. You can see that is a pretty bold blue. So how do we it will fade? Samantha? It will fade a little bit in rinsing. So what I have, if you have an empty squirt bottle or I just have a cup, really classy. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pour some of the dye into the cup, probably about half, and then I'm gonna fill up my bottle so I pour, <coughs> excuse me, I poured out half and I'm going to add more water to this. And by I, I mean Liz. And I'll check, let me check this purple while she's doing that. So we're just diluting it a little bit more to make sure we're getting the pastel shades that we want. Okay, so this purple, it's hard to tell with this light, but I think this purple is good. It's a little more dusty. Yeah, you can see it a little better when I turn it toward the light. So yeah, that's pretty. I'm gonna keep the purple how it is. 
And this brought me back my watered down blue. I'm gonna shake it and then I'll test it one more time. Let's see what we think. Yeah, I think that's better. But you could always keep uh, diluting until you get the color that you want. And then the great thing about that is you have this. So basically you just got an extra bottle of dye for your project. So just set that aside. Let me move my paper towels. Oh, tell them again the name of the cotton material website. So it's Leverett, L-E-V-E-R-E-T. L-E-V-E-R-E-T. And they have pajamas, solid color pajamas in every color and for adults and kids, which is fun. And they are not sponsoring this. So. <laughs> okay, so now we have our shirt here and what we're gonna do is really carefully apply our color, alternating colors on here. And I'm not even gonna bring the color all the way up to the rubber band. I want there to be a pretty distinct white stripe between. So I'm just gonna kind of. And since it's wet, the color will travel naturally it on its own. Spread. Even if you think you're giving it a lot of space, by the time you go to set it, it will have traveled pretty far. Mm -hmm. yes. So if you want a lot of white space, give yourself more than you think you would need. Yeah. And something we've done is after we've opened it, even after we've set it, we'll take like a paintbrush and brush it on if we feel like we need more color in any spot. Okay. Now I'm going to carefully flip this and do the back. We just recently did a tie-dye picnic. What wait, what tablecloth. Tablecloth that we used one of the other colors of there's um, a strike kit. kit. A yes, strike a strike kit. kit. Yeah. And it's so fun. And we thought we're giving it so much space in between. And by the time we did it, there was the stripes were, there was almost no white, but it turned out so pretty because yes. the way those color, the tulip colors blend really nice. Yeah, they know how to put colors together. Mm -hmm. They do. That's why it's so fun to get the kits because you, you it's lose- It's foolproof. Huh? Yes, your results will be perfect every time. making sure we get it into the middle too that's where you'll still have a lot of white too is yes in, and you kind of want that because you want to see the, the ridges contrast. from your yeah from your binding okay i'm going to give you this to do the pants okay and now i'm going to go with the purple and just do the other sections any questions while we're doing this part this is when we feel like we have to tell stories. Or yeah, something. yeah. Do a comedy act. Yeah. Sometimes Liz prepares trivia. <laughs> I do. It's great fun. It's great Because fun. everyone's so smart. <laughs> One of my favorite methods of dyeing and something I'm going to start doing for fall is ice dye. And the reason I like it is because it looks so organic. So it's a nice way to use fall colors in your dyeing because like if you used oranges and browns and greens, it'd be so pretty to use ice dye and the way they blend together. And you can do ice dye with tulip kits. You don't have to add water. You just sprinkle it over the ice. So if you haven't ever done ice dye, we've done 5 million projects mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel and on our blog. So the blog is prettylifegirls.com and the YouTube channel, you can just search Pretty Life Girls and you can find so many. And since sweatshirt season is coming up, I'm really excited to do more ice dyeing on sweatshirts. Okay. Are there any tricks to binding to get a great result? So I, I don't think the trick is necessarily, well, I get, I take that back. We stick to simpler binding techniques and also really organic, like, we aren't looking for a very intricate design or result. Mm -hmm. So if that is something that you're looking for, mm -hmm. there are videos and stuff that there's Facebook groups you can join. Amazing things. We stick to more simple 
attainable things. And I don't think the trick is necessarily in the binding. I think it's more in the color selection mm -hmm. and the application. Mm -hmm. So just squirting the dye on nice and slow to get it in the right spots and making sure you pick good colors that won't turn brown. Yeah. Unless that's what you want. Yeah. So the binding is pretty straightforward for the most part. I don't know if that's helpful, Lydia, but it's how we feel. It's also, I also feel like um, if you bind it really well and you go monochromatic, so just one yes. color, you're going to get a lot more distinct results in your binding. And that's also another place where maybe you could, you could play around with wet fabrics versus dry fabrics. So if you want really distinct lines, yes, dry is going to give you more distinct um, contrast between your colors and your whites. Mm -hmm. But using one color will help so you can really see the contrast and whatever color you choose. So like my favorite combination still is to do a navy dye and white. Yeah, it looks so classic. And the, the, the it's so distinct between the color of the dye and the white. So you can play around with it, but I, I think probably messing around with, with your wet fabrics first, your dry, your, dye, your dry fabrics will give you some interesting results too. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Yes, really good. Okay, well okay. now we've got our, our kit container here. Are we on top camera or? Um, I think Felicia is, she's just following us and doing Thanks, a great Felicia. job. Okay, so back to overhead. We yeah. have our containers here. And we're gonna move our project in. What is my name? Be careful because the colors will mix some. If you want to be very precise with your colors, you might want to set, put, apply one color, set it, rinse it, mm -hmm. apply the second yes. color. But I don't mind a little bit of mixing. Okay, that would be something like if you did do Christmas colors. Yes, you would not want red, red completely green. set it, then do your green completely set. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna put these in these containers, close them till they snap, and then you're just gonna put it in the microwave. And depending on the size of your project, you'll do like anywhere from one to four minutes, mm -hmm. would you say? Mm -hmm. These ones I feel like are a good size for two minutes. So we're gonna, I have just the top in this one. I'm gonna put the bottoms in this one and Liz is gonna pop it in the microwave for two minutes. And then once you're done, once it's done microwaving, it's supposed to sit for 15 mm -hmm. minutes because otherwise it's really hot. You could burn yourself. <laughs> it's really, really hot. And it, it keeps steady. Oh, with Mark. Felicia, are you saying something? Oh, maybe it's someone else's microphone. If you are hearing me, I hope so. I am having issues with my Zoom. Okay. Oh. So it is not allowing me to change the camera, but okay. I'm trying my best to figure out what is going on on my end. Um, All we have done is put things in containers and put them <laughs> in the microwave. So what are you guys seeing? Are they seeing our face? Put so, in gallery view to see. We can we see, can the, see the and, and oh, so oh, you're seeing the side by great. side. Cool. Perfect. That'll work. Okay. So we just put this stuff in the container and our microwaving. Let me take my gloves off now. Now, again, if you don't have your two, two minute uh, tie dye, what you would do is wrap it in plastic or in a Ziploc bag, um, wrap it in plastic or a Ziploc bag, and then set it according to the package directions. This is around eight hours. You're putting it in the plastic to keep it moist. So while we love this two minute tie dye kit because we are impatient about our tie dye, it is an essential. You can use plastic wrap, you can use a gallon size Ziploc bag, keep it wet, let it set. Um, so let us know if you have any questions about that with setting. Um, this is just something to really help move things along, which we love, because like I said, tie-dye is a slow process if you don't have this kit. So, um, okay, is it how many minutes? It's close, it's close, okay. That felt like a long two minutes, didn't it? I'm just making a bowl of water to show them. Okay, yes, we are in Sam's kitchen. <laughs> I know, and you can't water is running. Yes, water, water is running. Okay, 
I just hear the microwave. Are you guys okay with the blank screen for I'm one happy. second? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay you can you grab, grab some other one. beautiful pictures? Okay. Okay. So I just got a bowl of soapy water so I can rinse and show you this top done. And Liz is putting the bottom in cleaning out our space a little bit. Okay, so like we said, you're supposed to let this sit for 15 minutes. We're gonna be careful <laughs> and not burn ourselves. Yes. It's so hot. Do you have scissors for the bands? Um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm just gonna kind of like agitate it. You could run it under cold water too to help. Uh, okay, someone asked if this is being recorded. It is. It'll be on the Michaels Classes website mm -hmm. and on the Michaels YouTube channel in 24 to 48 hours. This is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get like a cup of ice yeah. to, so that my hand doesn't die? Yeah, that'd be good. Generally, we would wash this in the sink. With cold water running over with you. With cold water, it will have would have set for 15 minutes and cooled off, but we're doing this Zoom style. This is just Dawn dish soap, but generally <laughs> we would just rinse it in our sink with water and throw it in the laundry. So we're just doing this in a way that you can see it. Yeah, ice so that it doesn't burn my hand. <laughs> Can you use another microwave container? Um, I haven't tried, I just like the tulip ones. I, you could maybe do a microwave safe something, but we can't really speak to that. Yeah, you could test it for 30 second increments and make sure nothing's melting, but um, yeah, since we've never done it. <laughs> Let's see, can you use an, oh, and then how do you know how long to microwave? So you can over microwave. You can kind of start to tell if it is drying out the shirt. So I, I feel like it depends on the size. So if it's like, if like you're doing a sweatshirt, so it's something more bulky, then you'll want to go a little bit longer, but you can go with the two minutes, check it, make sure it's not like cooking your shirt and and also make sure there's no metal like rivets or buttons or anything on yes. your fabrics and if you're doing a smaller project i don't know like a little like a kid's shirt or a bag or something you could probably get away with one minute and that also depends on how set you want the fabric to be so just like if you are setting it over time with like the eight to 24 hours, the longer you set, the more vibrant the color will be. That would be a similar scenario here. Okay, I'm just cutting the rubber bands off so we can show you. Okay, Jan, we are having a tech, a little bit of a technical problem. So you might have to set your, you might need to change your view so you can see what we're having. Do the videos stay on the website forever or a certain time? Where do I find the videos? So the videos will be on Michael's classes. So the same place that you came to register for the class, there's a place to see um, replays and, or you can find them on the Michael's YouTube channel. And that will be in 24 to 48 hours. And we have a lot of other uh, classes on there that we've taught tie-dye classes. Yes. So if you like this class, you can search for other ones that we've done on there as well. We also share them on our channel so you can watch their yes. gallery view. Okay, Jan, this is for you. Gallery view. Okay, great. Gallery okay. view, you can see overhead and front view. Sorry, you guys. I am just rinsing. I took the rubber bands off. I'm rinsing this in soapy water because I'm not gonna put it in the laundry for you to wait and watch. <laughs> but I want to give you a reveal. Okay, Liz, go rinse this under water okay. for just a second to clear out some of the spreading. Okay, now I'm rinsing the pants and Liz is rinsing the top just because since it's sitting in like dye rinse water, it's a little bit blue tinted at the moment. Okay, we 
you have any other questions? Thank you. I misunderstood thought. Oh, okay. Yes. They stay on the website and on YouTube. The video will be available in 24 to 48 hours. And let's walk through the um, steps of setting again too, since we're doing it kind of funny. So if you're using a microwave container, you take it out and you can just rinse it in your sink until the water runs clear. Then you just toss it into your washer and dryer. Um, again, we're doing it this it's way. It's hard to do it in real time. Yes, <laughs> we're doing it this way for time. Um, if you don't have a two minute tie dye container, after you've bound and applied your dye, you'll wrap it in plastic wrap or in a gallon size of Ziploc bag and let it set for at least eight hours, then rinse it in your sink for until the water runs clear and then put it into your washer and dryer. And when you wash it in your washer and dryer, do it alone for that first wash so that it doesn't spread to any of your other fabrics. It shouldn't and usually doesn't, but it's just a good idea to do that. And then you'll be able to wear it. Did you say to wash it alone the first time? Yes. Is that you just said? Uh -huh. Okay, so that should answer Mary Ann's question. Yes. All right, yes, yes. wash it alone. If, if you rinse it till the water runs clear before putting in, you should, you should be just fine. But it's just a good idea to do it. You can also toss in an old towel. Yes. I have had things bleed in our laundry and my husband doesn't love when that happens. <laughs> Can't imagine why. No, he's the laundry engineer. Okay. I'm just going to wipe this off really quickly so that I can show you the finished top. Okay, so this is rinsed. And you can see, I'll lay it down here so you can see too. You can see the colors, and they look pretty dark, I, mostly because of our lighting, but mm -hmm. also because it's wet. Yes. Once It'll it's dry, it will lighten a lot. And it is so cute. It's really cute. Look at those diagonal lines. Yes, I love them. I like letting it sit in the bag because the colors are more vibrant. Yes. yes. If that's what you're going for, that is great. Yes. And since we're doing a pastel, we're definitely not as concerned about that. Yes. How do you feel about the vinegar setting method? I have never done that. <laughs> Sorry, Patty. <laughs> I feel Very nothing useless. about it. I feel zero. Um, do you do you mean like a vinegar bath to set the dye? Is that what you mean? I've never done that with tulip. You but, know, me too. That's what's oh, great. Oh, Patty, about it. thanks for laughing. <laughs> for very, okay. Do you want to show the bottoms too? I washed it with my dark darks and it was okay. Yeah, that's always a safe bet too. Okay. So here's the bottoms. How cute would you be so in your cute. little pajamas? Let's lift a little so you can see. It's hard to give you the idea, but after this, I'm going to photograph Liz in the finished set and we're going to have a blog post up tomorrow on prettylifegirls.com so that you can see it on a body. And we'll link the video there too, so that you can have, you know, a direct place. Yes. Can you hold them both up on the main page? Yes. yes, let's do let's that. Let's do it. Here, Liz. Okay. Ta-da! But these are wet, remember? Yes, should we show the dry yes, ones so you can get an idea? Dry. Where do we put them? Um, oh, right here. This one, you did quite a bit more white. Um, really something, that you can do if by chance it's a little darker than you want, you can lighten it with like a little bit of bleach really fast yes. in the sun. But it's pretty cute, huh? Now I wanna do this with Christmas colors. That'd be so fun. <laughs> okay, what are your last questions? We realize it's a little chaotic because like we said, tie-dyeing in real time. Yeah, it's, it's a more tricky. of a process but I think we covered how you can do it. And our book, uh, DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style, your questions that you have about fabric choice, setting, um, different binding methods, you can find those in that book, um, as well as 20 tie-dye projects that use tulip dye and a lot of supplies from Michael's. So that's a great resource. Um, and you can find that on Amazon, just type in DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style. And then we have so many tulip projects on our blog, prettylifegirls.com. Mm -hmm as well as on our YouTube to channel. see the book again. So oh, we and the author. <laughs> We're the authors. We're the authors. It's us. So um, here's proof. We're the authors. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's us right there. Um, I'll show on this underhand, this one too. Have you used anything right. other than rubber bands to secure fabric? Yes, mm -hmm. we've done some things with string. We've done some things with zip ties. We, there are, you can do like clamps. We've done where you bind it between this two one's really posters. similar to what we did oh, today. Yeah. Sweatshirt with tulip dyes where we watered it down. Thank you guys so much. Oh, you're all so nice. Let us know if you have any last questions in this last, we'll give it a minute. Yeah, a great thing you can do is go to Michael's and look in the tie-dye aisles and the way that Tulip has created kits for you that have the colorways that make it foolproof so that your colors, your projects will turn out beautiful every time. That is a great way to start as a beginner. You don't have to think about if my colors will look good together. You don't have to think, do I have all the supplies? The answer is yes. If you go and get the kits from Tulip, it's all there. One step, just add the water. You don't have to do any special soda ash or baths with that. And your projects will turn out perfect every time. And Michael's has tons of them that you can grab. The book is not at Michael's, but it's on Amazon. Or we have a shop that we um, have on our blog. So at the top of prettylifegirls.com, there's a shop link and you can get the book there too. Um, okay, you guys, thank you for your nice words. If not, it, maybe it was a little chaotic, but we've seen a couple people say that it, we made it look easy. And that's good <laughs> because it is. It is easy. If you can't tell, we are kind of basket cases and if we can do it so can you yes could you please type your type website the website for me perfect yep okay i can type it <laughs> you can also follow us on social media and find links to everything so we're at pretty life girls on instagram on youtube on facebook we'd love it if you came and followed us there the cc botched okay thanks closed caption <laughs> It. And you guys make sure that you are watching michaels.com for all their class offerings. They're so amazing. And um, yes, follow their YouTube channel so you can see all their videos after they've been recorded. If you make anything, make sure and tag us. Yes, you can tag Tool of Color Crafts on Instagram, tag at Michael's store and their hashtags are make it with Michaels and my, hashtag Michaels classes so that we can see what you make. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, guys. This is so fun. Bye. Have a good day.